Here we go. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday and welcome to one of our student in the workplace virtual connections here this morning. So welcome back if you've been with us for a couple of these connections or welcome if this is your first time. So this morning we have Colleen Wilson. She's the Community and Corporate Relations Manager at Dick's Sporting Goods and she's going to tell you all about what that means and what she does and some of the cool opportunities that she's had through her job. A few logistical things before we get started. We do have live Q&A throughout the entire event. For most of you, if you make your way up to the upper right hand corner of your screen, you'll see a little chat bubble that has a question mark in it. If you click on that, that will open our question and answer panel. You can submit questions at any point. We will get to all of them. We're gonna let Colleen chat a little bit for the first 15 minutes and then we'll tackle those questions for the last half. So we will make sure we get all of your questions answered throughout that. You can submit them at any time. But without further ado, Colleen, I'm gonna send you live awesome. and introduce you to everyone. So hello, Colleen. Hi, Anne. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me today. Oh, thank you for being with us. We're really excited to hear from you. So why don't you start and tell all of our participants out there so who you are, what you do, what does community and corporate relations manager mean, and what um, I think a lot of our folks out there probably know what Dick Sporting Goods is, but what is the office that you work for? Sure. So um, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, as Ann said, my name is Colleen Wilson. I'm the Community and Corporate Relations Manager for Dick Sporting Goods. I've been with the company for about 15 years now. Um, prior to that, I taught first grade. So um, it's been an interesting transition and one that I, I wouldn't trade for the world. So um, it's a it, the job that I have for the company is in our marketing department. And Basically, we do a lot of our community outreach. So we work with a lot of nonprofits in the community. We work with our teammates in our office to um, ensure that they have some great opportunities to be a part of as well. Um, we work with the foundation and, and are able to secure some grants for some of the nonprofits that we work with. Uh, we do corporate hospitality at different events around the country and um, a lot are, that are local, but Every now and again, we're able to, to get out and go in different areas around the country to help out. Um, I've also had the opportunity to work with some of our advocacy work um, in the last couple of years as well. So um, that's a very high level view, but when you think of this role, it's a lot of, it's very people focused and, um, and it is a, a good chance for us to be able to uh, just reach out to the the folks that are in our communities that that make it go round, and also reach out to a lot of youth. Um, that's our main focus: is youth and the youth sports. Awesome! Thank you for sharing, and we'll certainly get into some of the more specific details. Um, so I know that every day your job is probably different, right? Yes. Can you speak <laughs> to? <laughs> maybe on a day-to-day -day basis or week-to-week -week basis, what are some of the responsibilities that would fill most of your time? What do you spend a lot of your day doing? So the large majority of our days are focused on talking with our partners. I mean, that's, I think communication is a huge part of our uh, job to be able to just keep that constant communication with them. And especially at a time like this with, during the pandemic, that's been, um, it's been interesting and very necessary. Even sometimes if you're not talking directly about the work that you're partnering on, sometimes it's just good to do that gut check with everybody and understand like, where are you at right now? <laughs> um, I think that it's, it's really important. And, and to understand what's happening with the kids that are, um, that we're, well, so a lot of it is through, um, a lot of it is setting up meetings, having conversations with them, talking with my teammates to understand, you know, what what does the next week look like? What does the next month look like? Where are we at with this quarter? Uh, talking about budgets. What kind of assets do we have um, that can 
that we can send out as donations to organizations, making sure that we're able to support them appropriately. Um, monitoring our donation and sponsorship requests that, that are coming through and, and seeing who's out there and, and who we can help and um, who's aligning with our giving strategy. Um, and then just talking with our teammates also internally to see who's doing what to see how they, we might be able to help each other. So we wanna make sure overall, we wanna make sure that we are reaching out to the community, but also connecting with our internal teammates to say, okay, what are you doing? This is how we can help. Oh gosh, we already we also work with them too, which is something that has just happened today. So, um, and that way we are able to really do a 360 of just making sure that we're all connected and, and doing the best we can with the work that we're doing. Yeah, and so I think that's a nice segue into our next question because you sort of touched on it. But when you think about like maybe soft skills or those skills that you use on a regular basis, it sounds like communication for sure. Um, but what are some of those things that you feel like you need to be successful in your role? And, and Anne, I'm glad you said that because, you know, transitioning from two careers that were pretty different from each other, I always say like, you have your skill set, your toolbox, and you can pick that up and take it anywhere. Um, and I think that with this role and in my previous role, I think that communication, like we just said, with a lot of different kinds of people, um, time management is huge. So you have a lot to do during a day, a week, at an event, um, and it's being able to manage your time wisely and prioritize. Uh, what needs to come first, second, last, and what you can delegate to other people. So that's another important part to um, include your team members uh, so you're not killing yourself trying to do everything. It's, it's, that's why you have a team. So, um, so being able to time manage, be organized. Again, like I, I always say, when you have something planned to death, you can handle anything that comes your way because you have all the details down you know what's going to happen. You have, uh, you have your guest list. You have your, your plan of action. You have the schedule of what's going to happen. So when you have those those foundational organization things down pat, then the rest of it you can handle as it comes comes your way. You have a little bit more space to to handle those things and manage them. Um, those are the three big ones. I would say communication, time management, and organization with these roles and this skill set. Um, and I even had somebody say that to me, that there was a person um, at a hospitality event. And he said, I, when I was teaching, uh, I was leaving teaching and going into this role. And he said, I love to hire teachers and uh, flight attendants because they have people skills. And I was like, that's so interesting. And he was in a business setting. It's like, and they have people skills. And that's something that, uh, you know, you can't always teach somebody that. You either, it's something that you pretty much you have or you don't. And And he was, uh, it was interesting to hear his perspective on that. So yes, those are my three I'll leave you with. Communication, time management, and organization. Yeah, and I love that. And I love that you called it a toolkit. You took that from one career to another, right? Nobody would equate working at Dix to being a first grade teacher. They're not really the same thing, but you have the skill set that you have and you can apply that to a number of different settings. Can you explain briefly, because I think it's a, a good story and a good lesson how you kind of made the transition that you made and you spoke to obviously you had the skill set that you had but what kind of drove that because i think it's really great to hear that you know you can change what you want to do and where you want to be and that those changes are possible right um so i would say just to back up a little bit um my degrees are in education so I have an elementary education degree in a minor in social sciences. And then I also have a master's degree in reading and I am certified a certified reading specialist. So none of those are marketing or business, but, <laughs> but you know, we, they're, they're with me. So um, when I was teaching, I, I, I loved it. It was great, um, but it, there was a time where I knew that it was time to move on. And so I started, using my network at that point and just talking to people and learning about what other people did. And my statement most of the time was, I have no idea what you do, but I'm willing to try it. And so I think that it was my mindset 
that said, you know, like I, I knew I knew that one thing was coming to an end and I wanted to work hard to try to find something else that I felt was a good match for me. So I had conversations with people and just kept myself open to um, what might come next and keep learning. And the beauty of teaching, I had the summers off. So, and I had already finished my master's degree, so I was not taking classes in the summer. And I just, um, I was able, somebody had said, gosh, we have so we have an opening that we could just, we would love to have you come in and just help us with donation requests at the office for Dix. And so, and at that time, uh, all of our donation requests were by paper. So there was just a stack of papers that would come in from the mail uh, from all over the country and just asking for donations. So that was my summer job. Um, so when I was teaching, I was teaching, but then I was doing that in the summertime. And then even as the school year started back up, I continued to work with Dix. And um, where I could fill donation requests, I would do that um, in the evenings or events when there were different autograph sessions or special events at the stores. I was able to do that in the evenings after my uh, my teaching day was over. So, um, so there was a time where I was working a couple of jobs, which I don't think hurts anybody. Um, <laughs> and and so I I did that for two years and. Um, I worked really hard and, and, you know, kept, again, kept communication open with the people that, I, you know, I knew that I wanted to express my interest in working at Dix. And, and then at the U.S. Open in 2007, they uh, hired me full time. So I started in 2005, um, just working intermittently in the summers and throughout the school year. But then in 2007, I transitioned over full time to Dix Sporting Goods. Thank you for sharing that story. Again, I just think it's so important that, you know, you found a career in teaching, enjoyed it, but then it was time to move on. And you talking about using your network and being open to opportunities that came your way, both important things for really any of us to hear, no matter how old we are, right? Um, so I appreciate you being willing to share that. Um, so I want to get into a little bit of like the specific things that you do, because these are the cool things that I know um, are fun to talk about. So full disclosure, Colleen helped me meet Allie Raceman, <laughs> Olympic gold medalist from Rio right. and London. So she does have some some cool events in her back pocket that I know she can talk about. But um Maybe Colleen, if you could pick one or two, describe like some of the cool things that you get to do, but also what your role then is as a professional. You know, you're not on vacation, you're not necessarily attending the event as an attendee. So what what's your role look like, but how is it still really exciting and fun? So, I, all right, so, and help me stay on track if I forget anything, but I, I would say one of the coolest events that I ever was able to attend as a representative from Dix was um, at the White House in 2008, I believe it was. Um, President Bush, President George W. Bush, was in office, and he had a um, he had a passion for baseball. So it was awesome. It was called T-ball on the lawn, and there was a child from every state. Um, that was present at this game that was going to take place on the White House lawn with their families. And we got to eat lunch with these families from all over. And these kids were chosen for a multitude of reasons, whether they've just um, they've just completed chemotherapy or they've just overcome some obstacle in their life or they're just a good little ball player. And they were they're representing their state on the uh, White House lawn. So uh, we were able to meet the president and Laura Bush, um, but also it was it was an interesting time because Mike and Mike, uh, when they had the TV show on ESPN, they were there as well, and Kenny Chesney. And it was an interesting group of, of people there, plus folks like me that were there as sponsors uh, to just be a part of the event. And we got to you know see some of our folks from Little League also. So that was a really cool event because we got to meet so many interesting people on so many different levels. And, and I think that just having that level of professionalism is always important as well um, because you are representing the company in that setting and um, you're meeting such a variety of folks. So, and you wanna pay attention to security there too because 
it'll let you know if you walk off the sidewalk and you show video on it. So anyway, <laughs> um, that was one of the the cool the, one of the coolest events. Um, I would say that you know that's as the as the community relations part of our our role is reaching out to a lot of nonprofits and a lot of organizations that um, focus on youth sports or youth development in some form. So um, just to give a couple of examples of those organizations that are at the top of my head, um, we work with Urban Impact Foundation on the north side of Pittsburgh. They have a variety of different programs that they uh, host for their kids that are pretty much school age children. And one of their programs is called Play Ball for Kids. And that's where Dick Sporting Goods pushes in. Although they do have other, they have a career program, they have arts and entertainment. They, they have uh, you know several different programs, but we push in with the Play Ball for Kids. Um, YMCA, I, I love working with the YMCA because they, they have such a variety of programming for people of all ages. And we, you know, here in Pittsburgh, the YMCA of Greater Pittsburgh, who we've worked with, um, we do a Send a Kid to Camp program. So we partner with the YMCA to provide sleeping bags, water bottles, um, cinch bag. It, it, it can vary each year, but we the main things are, are those pieces that we donate to them to be able to reach out to kids who would not have a camp experience otherwise. So we they very discreetly get that equipment to the kids so they mesh with the group as they're being picked up and brought out to the campsites and um then they get to experience a week of camp and some of them have never been outside of of their home um and a lot of times the, they are from an urban setting so you know coming out to a wooded area it's, it's completely different and it's really awesome that we we're able to just expand that that frame of thinking for children. Um, and so we, that's something that we, we really love to do. Um, but then we also work with some different athletes and celebrities on their foundations as well. Um, there's, one, there's one woman from McKeesport, her name is Swin Cash. Um, she's most recently on a, a, a commercial, a secret commercial. And um, she, but we work with her, she worked or she played for the New York Liberty. Um, in the WNBA and she has a program called Cash for Kids. So she has a basketball league that uh, serves her community and she she puts her money where her mouth's at. So she um, she's in, invested in, in making sure those kids have those experiences. And um, she's also one of the female leaders at the New Orleans Pelicans now. So uh, she's a really great person that we work with. Um, Kim Hayward, uh, we work with him on the Hayward House and the work that he does in the community. Um, last year we did, <clears throat> excuse me, a, a free baseball clinic with Andrew McCutcheon. He wanted to make sure that there were kids that we could reach out to. Um, and we had it at Pitt to, you know, to have all of these kids from Urban Impact Foundation, the Josh, Josh Gibson Foundation. And we hosted them there and he made sure it was free and all these kids had a chance to play ball. So um, we work with some pretty, pretty cool people like that. Um, and it, it's it's just, again, you get to be a part of seeing these kids light up and, and be able to do something they love. And um, and it's it's really, it's pretty awesome. What are my other questions? And I think I might've forgotten something in here. Um, well, I mean, you definitely, you definitely highlighted the cool stuff that you did. I had goosebumps as you were talking about some of them. Um, so you, you kind of addressed your role in those experiences and what your responsibilities are. Is there anything you'd want to add to that? Yeah, I would say, you know, from the, those are more the external, um, our outreach and then internally like our corporate relations side of it where we're working with a lot of our teammates so that we call our teammates our, our employees are called our teammates so um one one thing that my my partner and i do we do uh, corporate memberships so we reach out to different destinations around the city that uh, we have a sponsorship a corporate sponsorship with a corporate membership i should say and then in turn our teammates have benefits that they can use. So um, like right now we're getting ready to renew our Carnegie Museums membership. So our corporate membership. So we have a partnership with them. And then in turn, we get different discounts, you know, buy one, get one admissions. Um, 
it, it's a, there's a variety of things depending on the entity that we're working with. So we have that with Carnegie Museums, the Children's Museum, the zoo, the aviary, uh, Kennywood when it's in session. And uh, we just got one, we just started one with the Clemente Museum in right outside of Lawrenceville, um, named after Roberto Clemente and um, being able to have our teammates take a part in all of those things. It just, it enhances their, their work life. So that, I, that corporate relations piece is, is pretty cool to have. Um, so our folks can take advantage of that. Um, also the corporate hospitality piece. So that's something that we do at different events um, where we might have like the Mar Pittsburgh Marathon or the Dick Sporting Goods Open. Um, in a normal setting when we have the store managers conference, which had to be virtual this year, but um, we go and do our, our hospitality setups at those different events. Again, to host our teammates, any VIP guests, um, our executive team, and just ensuring that people have what their you know basic needs are met and making sure they have what they need to feel comfortable and have a great time. So that's um, that's that piece. And then one other piece that I know it mentioned the advocacy piece, and Ian, you and I were just talking about this. Um, one thing that you know I'm pretty proud of is the the partnership that we have with Sandy Hook Promise. So. Um, most of us are familiar with the tragedy that happened there in Newtown, and we have partnered with them to just make sure that they have, they can continue their programming for Know the Signs and Say Hello. Um, the, that programming is so important, I think, for kids and adults. So um, it's it's a really good program, and, um, and I think it just, that falls outside of youth sports, but I think it's equally important to be able to serve our community as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing all of those details. Obviously, you wear a lot of hats and you you have a lot of roles there, which I think where that time management and organization yes. definitely comes into play. Um, so we do have some questions rolling in and for, yeah. for our folks who may be logged on a little bit later, um, just look for that little it's like a thought bubble or a chat bubble with a question mark in it and you can submit questions. Um, somebody has a question. Do you have a degree in marketing or is it just education? I do not have a degree in marketing. It is just an education. Um, I, I, I feel like I've learned a lot about marketing I, and I still ask a lot of questions. Like I think that again, that's just you're continuing to learn. Um, there are things that, you know, there's so many different aspects of marketing, like social media and our email team and um, gosh, our our uh, direct mail team. Like there are so many things that people are doing and, and going a million miles an hour. And sometimes you just have to you just have to go, wait, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Can you just please explain that to me? Because they will. You know, I work with really great people and they're, and they're like, oh, this is what this means. And this act like acronyms and I think that that's something that sometimes we have to break down for people and, and I, I am guilty of that as well but um, I think that those are uh, it's it's good to just keep learning from other people but you may not have a, a paper that says that you've graduated with a marketing degree just ask the questions though <laughs> yeah good advice though never be afraid to ask questions right it's better to ask than to I, not ask. Exactly. For sure, for <laughs> sure. Um, can you say uh, your favorite thing about your job and then also your least favorite thing about your job? My favorite thing about my job is that it has allowed me to meet so many different kinds of people and understand that there are so many people that care about the common good um, for kids and their communities. And it doesn't matter, like, it doesn't matter if you're a volunteer, if you're a parent, if you're a coach, if you're an athlete, if you if, or, you know, professional athlete, if you're a principal, you're an athletic director, like, it's really cool to see all of these people have the same focus for uh, doing good and making sure that kids succeed and have the tools that they need to be supported. Um, the least favorite thing about my job is that I would love to have a whole lot more time and money to be able to do all the things. <laughs> so, but I think that's probably uh, something that you would see in a lot of jobs. But I mean, it's the truth. Like sometimes you, again, you have to prioritize and decide you know, what's going to happen and what's not because you, you might have some really great ideas about how you could really 
blow something up and maybe you can use two of the five ideas you have. Um, and so it's, that's, you know, that's natural, I think. But um, those are the things that I would, I would love to have more of. Well, I'm sure when you do so much good in your role, all you want to do is keep doing it, right? right? Keep impacting <laughs> more people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, makes a ton of sense to me. Um, can you talk about, so if a student is interested in going into this type of work, and maybe specifically for dicks, but, but this type of work, what are the kinds of things that you think they could be involved with? Maybe the classes they should take and then also outside of the classroom. What can they do to help? So the first thing that comes to my mind is volunteer. So I think when I look back on some of the things that I did in college and some of the opportunities that I know about now with working some with some of the organizations, and I'm specifically thinking about the marathon office, um, there are things that I did to be a part of a group and a team and a club in high school and college that I think have served me well throughout my life because I again you get to learn about different people and how you make things happen together um and I think that's that's the best way to learn and also get a feel for doing something where you it might not be your job your day job but maybe if you're exploring other areas or you're trying to figure out what you want to do in your future that's a really great way to start getting some peeks into what's out there and what might resonate with you and bring or you might try something that you never thought you would want to do and it really like lights you up so um i think it's good to volunteer and i and i think about the marathon because there's so many different volunteer opportunities because it's such a huge event and different charities uh, have lots of volunteers you can run also like you can use your your skills to be able to raise money for things and um, and, and just see different aspects of, of organizations. Um, vol yeah, yeah, volunteering at even like your, in, in your community, like it's your municipal center or your library or just getting to know different um, aspects of a community can, can be great. Um, as far as classes go, I think that being able to communicate with people, so your written communication and your, speech classes, if that even exists anymore, I don't know, but I know that that has helped me quite a bit because sometimes they're like, can you just get up and say five, you know, take five minutes and do this? Like, yeah, like, and you just have to go. Um, so I think that communication skills there are important. Um, and I think just, again, um, you need, you do need your critical thinking skills too. <laughs> So I know for me, like math and science aren't necessarily my my core subjects that I loved, but I'll tell you this, like you have to have it. Like it just it makes you think critically about things and problem solving and trying to um you know work through things. Cause if you're at an event and something goes wrong, you gotta figure it out quick because it's gotta it has to keep going. Um and so I think that whatever topic that is, whatever subject, whatever class that is, those skills that come from those classes are very important to have. I would agree, absolutely. So someone has asked, can you give one piece of advice that you have for keeping focused and organized, since that's an important skill? Ah, it, yes. So I would, what I like to do is I have my planner, and I like to, <laughs> um, I like to write things down that I need to get done. And I have it like in my planner, it's by day. So I'll write down things that I need to remember each day. And then I can write down notes after that. And then I try to look at it each day and say, okay, what needs to happen first? And sometimes it's even just to get, if you're having a day where you're like, oh, like I, I'm really having a hard time getting motivated today because that happens, right? <laughs> so you just maybe want to get a couple of things done to get, you, get that motivation going and, and start that momentum to carry out the rest of your day. Um, but just looking at that and prioritizing, and sometimes if you don't happen to get to something on one day, then just push it to the next and it is okay 
if you know unless there's like a serious deadline which that's you know very possible um i think that you know having a little bit of flexibility to say okay this didn't happen today but it can't happen tomorrow or it can happen wednesday or whenever um and just making sure that you keep track of those things and I like to cross them off. That's just my thing. When it's done, I cross it off. And that way there's that, that feeling of accomplishment. And that way I can stay focused on, on those things. Um, and also in my inbox, in my email inbox, like I, I try to go through that too, because I think now in the age that we're in, like I have my planner of things, but email is still happening and IMs are still happening and LinkedIn messages are happening and uh, you know, there's things that are different places, but um, again, it's just looking through those things and saying, okay, I need to, I need to get back to my manager now. Like that's a priority. Um, I need to, but I still need to reach out to this person that I know we owe a check to, you know, so they are not waiting on us um, for and wondering where it's at. So there are things that definitely hold priority and it's a matter of just checking those things off and going through them day by day. Awesome. Great advice. I hope that those out there can take something from that because I'm a planner person myself, so I understand the importance <laughs> of those lists and day by day. Yep, I totally get it. Um, well, we have kind of reached the end of our time together, but um, if I could leave you with one final question for our, especially our high schoolers out there and maybe our seniors, what's one piece of advice you would give them as they are now trying to navigate what comes next and making all of these choices and figuring it all out? Take it day by day and, 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 and really to pay attention to the things that bring you joy and make you happy. Um, those, are, those are happening for a reason um, and, and pursue those things. Uh, whether that is in the form of an opportunity or, you know, getting to learn from other people, that's, those things are telling you something. So take steps towards that and, and pursue it and learn as much as you can and keep your, keep your mind open to all the opportunities that are out there and available for you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, I just want to say thank you to Colleen for joining us here today. We really appreciate all of the information that you were sharing with us. Thank you, Ian. I appreciate you being or appreciate you guys having me. It's been a very great half hour. It went by very quick. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Well, it was our pleasure. So I just want to leave everyone with one final message. If you stay tuned into our website, that's where you can find all the links for all of our upcoming connections. We have plenty of these scheduled between now and the middle of December. So we hope to see you joining us on some future sessions. Thank you for attending this one. Thank you for your thoughtful questions and I hope everyone has a great rest of your day.